the first full frame camera from Nikon, the Nikon D3. Today, 30th November 2007, our first impression video brought to you by DigiRev. Now, without further ado, let's find out what's in the box. The software suite and the manual, both the large and the small, as well as Capture NX. A special offer for the release of the D3. Next, we have the Nikon D3 hand strap. Next, we have a power cable, a USB cable, and an AV cable. And of course, what we've all been waiting for the Nikon D3. We also have a hot shoe cover, a USB cable holder, and a battery charger. And of course, the Yen EL 4A battery. The Nikon D3, the first Nikon full frame camera, FX format, with 12.1 effective megapixels, high density 51.8 AF system, a wide sensitivity range of up to ISO 25600. A high resolution 3 inch LCD monitor with wide viewing angle, CF card with double slots, and also two live view modes available. The Nikon D3 definitely exceeds all expectations. For test purposes, we'll be using the Nikon 85mm f1.4 The Nikon D3, first full frame camera from Nikon. The body of the D3 is in a similar layout to the D2XS. All the buttons, dials are similar. The AE lock button, of course, has shifted down to a smaller button, but uh, everything else is pretty much where it usually is. The front, we have the rubber cap that's tied to the camera, so you won't drop it or lose it making things a lot easier for those on the move on the side we have our USB wire our DC in our HDMI connector and of course the AV out the memory card compartment we have seen carries two CF cards This full frame camera definitely feels very well balanced. The D3 has the same LCD as the Nikon D300. Probably one of the best LCDs available on any DSLR today. The menu system is also very similar. We have six sections. The playback menu, the shooting menu, the custom setting menu, the setup menu, the retouch menu, and finally the personalized my menu. The playback menu 
consists of the standard features like delete, playback folder, hide image, display image, and so forth. The shooting menu has the shooting menu bank where you can customize which menu bank to call settings from. The reset shooting menu, active folder, and file naming. And of course with two slots, you can select which slot to use. And of course image quality is and image area is also very important. Others in, including JPEG compression and raw recording are also standards. Next, the custom setting menu. Here we can set which custom setting bank it is which we could refer to from the shooting menu. In the setup menu, we have the standard functions again like format memory card, LCD brightness, video mode, HDMI connection, time, and so forth. In the retouch menu, here we have the same setup as we've mentioned in the D300. As our D300 part 2 review shows, it is actually very good for in-camera editing of white balance. For those on the go, this could be an invaluable and easy option. Finally, my menu, where you can customize all the above mentioned features and functions. The Nikon D3 has two live view modes. Through the shooting menu, we can access live view and select which one we want to choose, be it live view mode that's handheld or tripod. The handheld mode allows you to focus by pressing the AF button, switching off live view, and then reassessing live view when the focusing is done. When using tripod mode in live view, focusing is done using the CMOS data collected. By pressing AF on, the processor actually does a best estimation of what is in focus. This will obviously take longer and it's very important that the camera is still when this is being done. The D3 has a full frame sensor, as we are aware. While you may be disappointed that the CMOS only has 12.1 megapixels, Nikon more than makes up for it with a very fast shooting burst mode. Thank you for joining our video for the first impression of the Nikon D3. You will find the part 1 of our hands-on review on Monday, the 3rd of December from Digiref. Digiref, passionate about photography.